Welcome. Today uh, we start the design of uh, class AB discrete power amplifier for audio purposes. As promised in the previous video, which I posted as a demo, uh, we'll be able to design a 25 watt power amplifier that we can use for, uh, as earlier mentioned, for audio purposes and you know for exploring uh, uh, discrete power transistor power transistors and uh, small signals transistors used in audio applications as you can see on the screen this is the class ab uh, audio amplifier that we'll be designing in a, in the next two or three videos uh today we should be able to uh, basically uh, spec out uh, our specification of what uh, this amplifier is going to achieve and uh, at least uh, come up with some values for uh, say for the power supply and some of the output transistors that we need in order to achieve uh, or design this amplifier completely so before we get started, uh, like I started at the beginning of the video with uh, a preview of the sound that you are uh, that you can expect from such an amplifier, uh, let's give you another demo and from there we'll proceed to uh, get the specifications for uh, this power amplifier. So let's play another demo just to show you the capability of this discrete power amplifier. Okay. Of course, this camera, uh, this cheap camera that I'm using is not going to reproduce the full scale of sounds that is produced by my speakers. So, uh, I mean, in real life, this is going to sound much better. But regardless, uh, this is just to give you uh, a demo and as well as a motivation to stick with this video because we're going to go into a lot of details and calculating all the values of each component shown on this circuit here and why each component is chosen uh, based on its uh, characteristics and uh, the, the thing, the function of each device. So since we're going to do that, uh, this video will give you just a, motiva a motivation to stick with the video and learn uh, basically the material that I'll be presenting. So let's go ahead and give a small demo again uh, just to give you an idea of uh, how well this amplifier performs and of course we'll be doing once we go through the tutorial we'll do a, a testing of of the performance and characteristic of this amplifier including the distortion performance power handling capability and you know frequency response so uh, but for now, I think listening test will basically uh, give us an idea how well this performs. And of course, you can see that I have laid it out in uh, in this uh, sortless breadboard here. So, and you know, as you can see, um, you know, as you might be aware, the, they're not the best for if you're going to achieve low noise circuits. So, this will, you know, whatever you hear. If we lay it out in a in a PCB, uh, we'll be able to achieve much better performance out of it in terms of uh, the quality of the sound. So, but regardless, uh, even at, you know the way it's shown or you know, the way it's constructed, uh, this is quite capable amplifier. So let's give a listen. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and uh, get the specifications for this power uh, amplifier. Uh, to start it, let's talk about the power because uh, that's one of the most important uh, functions of uh, any power amplifier is actually to get the small signal that we receive at it, the inputs and from a, say for example, from a pre-amplifier and then basically get a power gain and feed a very low uh, impedance um, load. So since that's one of the uh, main um, functions of a power amplifier, the power that I chose for this amplifier is 25 watts. Reason is for uh, personal use and in home applications, you're not gonna need more than 25 watts. Um, basically, that's ample enough power and if you have uh, decent uh, speakers uh, which are efficient, uh, delivering 25 watts to them, um, they should be able to convert that to uh, uh, very impressive sound uh, in like I said in home environment so that's why I chose 25 watts and the uh, a power amplifier should also handle a uh, very low impedance load uh, for example for this uh, application I have chosen it to handle at least 4 ohms uh, minimum 4 ohms it should be able to handle 8 ohm speakers as well but 4 ohms is the load that we should be able to handle. Uh, the THD for this amplifier, of course, this is an important specification as well, needs to be less than 0.1% at full power output. And at 20 kilohertz and as we'll talk about why this specification is necessary why I'm putting the frequency but uh, basically the total harmonic distortion of this power amplifier should be less than or equal to 0.1 percent at full load output power and you know we could go you know play around with the amplifier to actually reduce this to much lower levels uh, uh, but 0.1 should be enough for the purposes of this video and we should achieve we should be able to achieve this and work towards to make this amplifier have that much distortion at the full output power at 20 kilohertz uh, next is the Another important specification that we need to cover is the frequency response. The frequency response of this amplifier should be from 20 to 20 kilohertz. This is normal for audio uh, purposes because our hearing, uh, human hearing, uh, is in this range. So we should be able to uh, basically have a flat response in terms of the gain and power delivery to our speaker. This is frequency. This is the uh, amplitude. Say the amplitude of the voltage we deliver to the load, or I, I can also say the power. I could just plot it in power. We should be able to get a flat response all the way from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Okay, so if we choose uh, the components into the class AV amplifier that will design properly, we should be able to achieve this specification as well. So these are the main important uh, specifications that we need to adhere to uh, basically design this power amplifier. So let's go ahead and get started uh, figuring out some of the things we need to achieve this specification. One of them is the power supply requirement. So in order to deliver 25 watts to a 4 ohm uh, load, uh, we going to need a specific power supply. And we can get that by just doing a simple calculation. So the power delivered, and remember this power is average power. We're not talk talking about the peak power ravish that uh, 
a lot of manufacturers put on their amplifiers. We're talking about uh, average power delivered to the load. So the average power given to a load is given by the formula, the RMS voltage squared divided by the load impedance, right? So in this case, four ohms. The reason why we'll take four ohms in this calculation will be apparent in a second. So if we rearrange this equation, all we're gonna get is the RMS voltage and this should be the minimum RMS voltage that we need in order to achieve the 25 watt uh, output is going to be the root square of the average power multiplied by the load impedance, right? So if we go ahead and calculate that, we're going to get, uh, so basically this is uh, 25 multiplied by so 25 multiplied by four, and the answer is 10 volts RMS. So why did I choose four ohms? So typically in a speaker, we'll have, uh, basically its dominant characteristics is the resistance of the, uh, uh, the voice coil. Uh, although at higher frequencies, uh, the impedance does go high uh, because of the inductance of the speaker coils. Uh, or the the voice coil, but uh, the minimum impedance that we can expect from a single speaker, you know, from a, a one speaker uh, would be, so for example, if I was to look at this speaker here, for example, the minimum impedance that I expect to see at the terminals of the speaker uh, is the DC resistance of uh, the speaker. So if this speak if we go ahead and measure with our multimeter here set into ohms, uh, basically we'll get the lowest case impedance that this speaker will present to the power amplifier. So uh, basically that's why I chose four ohms and the speakers I have, which I showed you at the beginning of the video, I have basically the, uh, the, the uh, subwoofer, uh, speakers are four ohms they have an actual four ohms uh dc resistance but uh you should i should be careful in case of my speakers because it's a three-way speaker so it has a crossover network so the uh the two other speakers the mid-range and the uh tweeter will also be in parallel with it so they that you know these the using multimeter to actually measure the DC resistance in that case is not really advisable if you're so basically the four ohms is only for a single speaker like this basically so that's why I chose four ohms here so another thing that we can go ahead and figure out is also the um, peak voltage amplitude that we need uh, from this so the uh, V peak of this is if basically we're using a, a, a sine wave in this case so if we do that then it's basically going to be uh, 10 multiplied by the square root of 2 so that is going to be around 14.14 volts peak right uh, and that's something we can use but remember uh, we'll have some uh, losses at the output of the, uh, the, you know, the power devices. So the power devices here will have some losses, right? Because uh, we'll be using a Darlington output. Uh, this transistor will never saturate. Um, so there will be quite a bit of uh, voltage drop here when the, at the peak of the positive or on the negative of the output of the uh, signal and also the since the emitted degeneration resistor we're using 0.22 ohms will also have a loss there and remember since this stage will be de driving this stage this is just only a power gain uh, so this stage since this stage is the you know this is a common emitter output the uh, voltage will follow this voltage will follow this voltage but remember we have two diode two diode drops here as well so we'll have considerable amount of drop so our DC rail, this DC rail and this DC rail, we have to make sure that 
we account those losses in order to if we are to deliver 25 watts so what I'll do is I, I'm going to be generous and assume that the losses across those output devices plus the emitter degeneration resistor uh, is going to be around 4 volts so I'm just going to add 4 volts to this so the plus or minus DC volts that we'll use for our rails will be 18 volts okay so that's what we'll have so plus or minus 18 volts is our DC rail okay next is uh, we can figure out what the maximum dissipation is uh, going to be across our load during the entire wave so for example if we put a test signal here like a sine wave and we test the power capability of this to this amplifier we're going to find that uh, during this time during this whole period basically you know this this is going to be somewhere around like I said you know the, you know 14 volts let's say 14 volts assuming there will be few losses here we're using 18 and minus 18 volts here so during this the these power devices will dissipate certain amount of power right so what is the maximum power that we need to make sure in order to choose the right devices right so to do that it's uh, very easy to show that the maximum power dissipated across such devices you know across such an individual device per half of the sine wave is given by this formula here P dissipation maximum across those output devices during half of the sine wave so for the positive peak and for the negative peak of you know during that entire uh, period basically is given by the formula again and we're gonna take the peak voltage and square it and then of course this will be the maximum right remember so actually I should specify that this is V peak max right so basically it's that divided by pi square multiplied by the load resistance and remember uh, it's very easy to show this formula if you want uh, I can show you in the next video if you feel like it you can leave it in the comments but it's very easy to derive this formula uh, why that's the case you know the part the maximum power dissipation across those devices so if we do that uh, we'll you know plug all the values in here we plug 2 times 18 squared divided by pi squared multiplied by 4 we're going to get uh, basically we're going to get around 16.4 watts okay so we have to make sure that the output devices these output devices are capable of dissipating 16.4 watts at uh, you know at a certain temperature we cannot use the uh, ambient temperature because obviously the junction is going to heat up uh, because you know the power dissipation so by looking at the spe the, the data sheet of these devices we can take a look but uh, all we have to make sure is that you know for the power we've chosen our devices need to dissipate uh, a minimum of 16.4 watts okay so and if you're going to use uh, devices that I'll, I'll spec in this um, in this amplifier if you're going to use different devices then those devices should be able to dissipate that amount of power at a higher junction temperature okay so these are the specifications for this power amplifier uh, what I'll do is uh, hopefully by tomorrow uh, I should be able to go in and design the input stage of this amplifier completely and you know we'll design the section tomorrow uh, on the input stage and why we're using a differential amplifier versus you know a single ended amplifier we'll go into the details and if you want as a preview you can go ahead and watch my other video that goes into detail of uh, an ampl um, a differential amplifier design uh, so as a refresher if you want so uh, that's where I'm at at the moment so let's basically 
close this video by playing uh well we don't need to play again i was going to play another uh demo but we, you've heard the amplifier you know sounds uh quite okay so we'll call it at that and uh basically i'll see you in the next video where we'll design the input stage thank you very much for watching and uh looking forward to uh doing the other video thank you very much bye